So my name is Nathan Hotelin. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the National Eye Institute. Um, I have my PhD in biomedical engineering and I currently do research on developing non-invasive therapies and uh, assessments for macular degeneration. So a lot of the work that I do is involved with Kapil Bardi, um, and he is currently developing a cell therapy for macular degeneration. And what we realized going to the FDA and, and becoming approved for, for the clinical trial was that we needed a non-invasive way to do quality assurance and, um, and qualify the, the cells that we were going to implant into the patients. So a lot of the work uh, that I do involves taking uh, multispectral bright field images of cells and then using the data in those images to determine if the cells are healthy, if they have developed any kind of cancerous mutations, um, and then the identity of the cells. Uh, right now, we have done this in a small subset of patients, so uh, there's been five or six, um, and initial results are really promising. Uh, but uh, there's, there's still a lot of work to do to make sure that it's robust and that it will work for dozens of people or, or uh, across a larger population. Um, so I, I think that our, our next steps are, are really just scaling up and making sure everything is, is robust and, and works the way we think it's going to. The, the hope is, is that it will be something that we go to the FDA with, so it is um, used in patient care and the, it, the, the patient won't ever actually interact with, with the, the qualification, but the, the cells that go into the patient um, will be qualified by, by this process. So the, the therapy that, that Capil is, uh, is using is taking uh, blood from patients, um, taking that, that blood and transforming it uh, into induced pluripotent stem cells, taking those induced pluripotent stem cells and differentiating them into the cells that are dying in the patients called retinal pigment epithelial cells. We then take those retinal epithelial cells and we uh, seed them onto a biodegradable nanofiber scaffold. And then we take that whole construct and implant it into the back of the patient's eye in the area that um, is transitioning between dying and, and, and still alive. Um, and, and our hope is, is that we can kind of stave off progression of disease and, and perhaps gain some vision back by, by using that approach. And so the problem is, is that that entire process takes about 150 to 160 days. Um, and so that's a lot of time in like a cell manufacturing world for something to go wrong. So um, the cells could become contaminated or they could develop some sort of mutation. Um, you could also imagine that if you were doing this on a large number of patients that perhaps you know, the, the lids on two different dishes get switched and then the cells that you think are from one patient are actually from another. Um, these are all kind of issues that, that you hope don't happen, right? But you want to make sure that there are quality assurance metrics in there to, to make sure that they don't happen and, and to, to make sure that everybody is getting um, cells that are, that are fully functional, that are their own, um, and, that, uh, and that are safe. So the idea is, is to use this assay um, to kind of help uh, provide an indication for those three things. So safety, efficacy, and, uh, and identity. That is a good question. So uh, we are right now in a pre-IND phase, so um, invention disclosure phase. So the idea is, is that we are finishing up our animal studies now. We do uh, transplantations in pigs. Um, the hope is, is that we've been working with the FDA for the past two years um, so that in, yeah, in the next like six months we will transition out of the, the pre-IND phase and move into a phase one clinical trial. Um, and, I, and I think that what we are doing in terms of recruitment, um, I know that we have already recruited one patient um, to, to once we, we get approved to, to start the therapy on. Um, but I, I think the FDA is interested in, in doing kind of a stage, like make sure it's safe in this person and then, and then we can kind of go to the next. Um, so I, I think you could go to clinicaltrials.gov um, and, and kind of if you you know, we're at the site at just the right time that we were looking for somebody, you could, you could get involved that way if you have macular degeneration um, or, or know someone who, who has macular degeneration. Um, but it's a, it's a fairly small pilot, so I think it's, it's a maximum of like three to six people um, for the next couple of years.